Aloha, good morning. Um, welcome to Stacy to the Rescue. <laughs> I'm here today with a person who actually did rescue people during World War II in the Battle of Okinawa. He is uh, Herbert Yanamura, who saved the lives of over 1,500 people in the battle um, in the village of Maehira, and also Alex Bokeri, uh, film director. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the film. Well, actually, let's. I'll give people a little bit of background since, uh, uh, full disclosure, I, pr I produced these two films. So obviously, I think that it's an important story that we need to share. Um, so her, uh, he, he actually was in the 442, and but he had very, um, very good language skills. So he. Uh, he went to the military intelligence service, and those guys were all over the Pacific. They were um, highly classified, and uh, General Willoughby, who was second in command to General MacArthur, credits them with saving over a million lives and shortening the war in the Pacific by two years. So mm -hmm. um, yes, they, they did a lot to save lives. Yes, um, yeah. and it was and her story in particular is um, it's so ironic and touching because. Um, so, you know, Mr. Yanomar was in, you know, all over, like, Leite almost got killed by a kamikaze pilot mm -hmm. <laughs> who That's crashed fun. into the LST next to them. Yes. Um, but in, like, as I mentioned earlier, in the Battle of Okinawa, uh, it was towards the end of the war, of the battle, um, that they, they had a ceasefire, and so uh, the citizens of Okinawa were committing, committing suicide, and so in instances, the Japan Army was giving them grenades and, um, you know, and also giving them potassium cyanide to, you know, basically end their lives. Um, and so what Herb did and other linguists, they, he went on the loudspeaker and he um, broadcasted and he said, you know, come out, we'll guarantee your lives. Um, we have food, we have clothing, um, we have medicine, and so you should just come out. And so that's how he saved the lives of over 1,500 people. They heeded his call. Um, and so the film, which I'm not sure we're going to get to show you, <laughs> um, but hopefully we will. Um, there are two films that we made about her, and uh, one is a documentary, and that was uh, done two, three years ago. Um, so what happened was the museum in Okinawa had an exhibit about the ties between Hawaii and Okinawa and how it was really the Hawaii Okinawans that came to the aid of Okinawa. They sent pigs, they sent goats, clothing. Um, and then, uh, and so there are a lot of these veterans in the exhibit and um, one of them was Herb. And so the curator, Kunugi, uh, he said, you know, we found a woman that Herb saved, and she remembers him, and they're going to meet for the first time next month. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, we need to bring a camera crew back, and we need to shoot this, because um, uh, you know, I, I knew that the Okinawa media and the Japan media would cover it, but really, you know, Herb is an American, and, and America really needs to know this story. Um, yeah, so why don't we, we talk about that a little bit. So how did that feel, Herb? <laughs> like Sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good reminder of what actually happened. Mm -hmm. and your resume was very well done. <coughs> so <coughs> taking the film around, I mean, we've uh, it premiered at HIF, the Hawaii International Film Festival, last year, and then um, we showed the documentary in San Francisco earlier this year, and then the Surrender Call, which is a short film, um, won Best Hawaii Short on the Big Island at the Big Island Film Festival. That was pretty cool. Um, well, Herb, what? Well, you're the veteran. What do you What do you think of all this? <laughs> well, I don't know how to say it, but I think. Uh, Perhaps, as long as the uh, interest in uh, in World War II continues on, I think these stories of actual events would have a rather uh, significant uh, part in it. You know, I think so. In my case, for example, <coughs> I was able to uh, rescue a whole lot of people in Okinawa, and uh, evidently that um, meant a lot for our operations. I know 
Major Teague, who was uh, next to me while I continued to uh, um, con uh, make the surrender appeal to the people of Okinawa, was very impressed. I mean, the Major, that uh, were, this, this, this was the first time he ever saw anything like this happen in, in combat. And uh, he was very impressed that my talk over the PA system, where we use a loudspeaker, I use the microphone, and how effective it was, and it really pleased him to no end. You know, so I was very uh, thankful that for the opportunity to to uh, to make this appeal to the people of Okinawa. Mm. <clears throat> cool. And then, how did it feel to see your story brought to life? Like that's what we're watching. Yeah, right now. I thought that was. <laughs> Very nice of you both to uh, put it together into a very good uh, film. Uh, yeah, you made a couple of films actually. Huh? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, Alex, your uh, how? What was your biggest challenge? Well, getting into this project, um, when you asked me to. Uh, film the um, reunion between Herb and, and uh, the people he saved in Okinawa. Um, you know, of course I was excited. It's, it's an amazing story and, and I immediately wanted to tell it. But then once we sat down and started interviewing you, oh, our interview time was probably about three hours worth of material. And, uh, and I mean, we looked at each other and we're like, okay, there's, there's so much more here and it, this deserves um, a bigger story and, and at least another more dramatic telling of the film because the way you described it and what we were able to capture in Okinawa I don't think totally captured um, how incredible the story actually was so from the time uh, we had a conversation about making a film to making the film was probably about three months and uh, it was very compressed but um, I think the final product came out great and actually I wanted to ask you um, how did how did you feel seeing it in a movie theater on a big screen with with everybody oh, there? Right, what right. was that so, like? To preface, we showed her a rough cut of this one that you're seeing right now, but I, I really wanted him to see the documentary for the first time because mm. that's that's you, right, Herb, mm. <laughs> on the big screen, and so yeah, get that from people. him. Yeah. yeah. So well, how did that feel? <laughs> uh, that was well, really well. More, so I don't know how to say it, but rather unexpected to begin with. But the part that really touched me was uh, to meet this woman, uh, Hatsuko, uh, who was 10 years old at the time I made the surrender appeal over the PA system. And uh, she had heard my voice and uh, she claimed she didn't really understand what I was saying because she was only 10 years old, but she re uh, remembered my voice and she said she was so thrilled to have the chance to meet me. Mm. You know, so we finally met about what, three years ago in mm -hmm. Okinawa and that was a very touching moment and right. to see this girl. Uh, she was 10 years old back in 1945, but uh, some 68 years or so later, we got to meet each other and uh, that was, very, very uh, touching. Did to you me. expect to see all the media there? I mean, everyone was there. It was this big crowd. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, likes. I, I, I didn't really expect it because, of course, uh, I don't know, maybe I had some hint from you or somebody that you're going <laughs> to be there to record this event or something. But the, the, the moment that is most touching, of course, was to meet this woman mm -hmm. you know, for the first time. Right. And uh, she was one of the hundreds or thousands that were saved mm -hmm. uh, during mm -hmm. my surrender appeal. Right, and you also met a, a man who was a young boy in the Teketsu Kinotai, right? The emperor's iron blood, and he was forced, right? He remembers your call, but he couldn't surrender, otherwise they would have shot him. So the Gosh. name was Oshiro. Oshiro. Yeah. Mr. Oshiro. Well, 
And then there's another one who called in too. Well, who? Ah, uh, no, it was there was an Oshiro. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. Well, uh, cool. Toroko, I think, is, <clears throat> was his name. Mm. Toroko Oshiro, right? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Cool. Actually, let's take this opportunity to go to a break, and we'll be right back with Herb Yanamura and the Battle of Okinawa. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Aloha. This is Stacy to the rescue, and we are here today talking about a two films, actually. Uh, based on, well, a documentary, which is about Herbert Yanomura, who saved 1,500 people in the Battle of Okinawa, and Surrender Call, which is a dramatic short reenactment type of film about that. So we're back with Herb and Alex. Alex is the director of the Surrender Call. Um, hmm. <laughs> so Herb, tell me, okay, so we've taken these films to schools and kids have seen this and you've seen their reaction. They're very um, happy to meet you. Um, how, does, how does that feel? I mean... Well... I mean, good, Personally, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know how to take it, but um, because I perhaps personally don't feel all that great about my activities or what I uh, did during the war, but if the, 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 the audience with the school children and others are, I find it interesting to listen to my story, I'm happy for that, mm. yes, that some of these uh, activities that I was involved in had some meaning to the people. Um, you know, right, exactly. Yes. Because um, and, and that's what I, I wanted to you know accomplish with these films. Uh, most people don't know these stories, and a large part of that was because you know the military intelligence service was classified. Yes, I mean they yes. actually told you not mm. to talk about oh, it. Oh yes, right. Yes. So right. how did that feel? I mean, you know. Yes. So that I think that you hit the point. I mean that it was not well known about what. Uh, activities we were involved in combat, but now that it's open and uh, the people have a chance to appreciate the efforts of the MIS uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the war. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's, that's great, I think, yes. Mm -hmm. And Alex, what does it mean to you to be able to tell these stories? You know, I think um, since I haven't been involved in this sort of work my entire life, this is something I've taken on recently, um, to hear these stories and realize that none of this was a part of the curriculum that I went through in school. Um, even the issues of 442 were just barely, barely touched on. Uh -huh. um, you know, meeting you and meeting the other vets, um, it's become so clear that this is something that needs to be remembered, uh -huh. something that needs to, uh, it needs <coughs> to be honored properly and um, in a way that my generation can understand the things you guys had to struggle with. Uh -huh. And um, so for me, it's become something that I need to help in any way I can to get the word out to make sure your story isn't forgotten. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, this is the sort of... Uh, experience that we want to replicate with other vet stories going forward, Stacy and I. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you wanted to comment on that. Oh, right. Well, well this is some footage of uh, there's Herb and the woman he saved, Hatsuko. Um, but yes, it's so important to share these stories because, you know, we don't have too many of you with us still, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I've always said that, you know, it's best to hear the story from the horse's mouth. And while, you know, 
there is a short film which is a dramatic reenactment, you know, it, that gets to people in a different way emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, and then a documentary, of course, is very powerful because people see, whoa, this is real, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and I remember you actually mentioning this field in front of us, there were so many bodies that they had to, you know, bulldoze them. It's just oh, so, yes. so terrible. And, and I think that, you know, war especially gets um, romanticized or glorified, and, and that's by the people who really have not endured the suffering, mm -hmm. you know, in such a situation. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's one thing that we also hope to bring to light, you know, at least through people remembering it or sharing their stories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's another part to this story here in the Maihira area. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Following the event in Maihira proper, mm -hmm. I was uh, informed of uh, uh, a cave in which the 24th, Japanese 24th Division headquarters were located. And so we said, well, I don't, I, I don't think our, any attempts that we may carry out uh, will have any uh, success but let's give it a try. Because we were informed by a Japanese soldier who had escaped from the cave that General uh, Amamiya, who was the commander of 24th Division, was in this cave, which is located just close by the Maihira village. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, let's give it a try. So we went to the cave entrance, set up the loudspeaker, and I uh, talked for about half an hour and uh, <coughs> uh, tried to uh, coax the uh, general to surrender, knowing very well that he would never surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, we give it, gave it a try and I left. But you know something, uh, some, what, 2013, just a few years ago, I found out that my attempt, my, my call into the cave, was heard by the people who were in there. And this one of the guys that made this known is today, uh, well, he's no longer living. He was in Hokkaido. And I wanted to go to meet the guy when I found out that he was in the cave. But I read his account of what he heard. And when I read that, I said, boy, that's exactly what I said over the loudspeaker into the cave trying to get the general to surrender. Mm -hmm. And so when I read his account, I said, wow, this is the first time that I am getting uh, a direct uh, report on what I, I, I did you know, from the enemy side. Mm -hmm. This guy heard my talk and he made a record of it. So I said, wow, that was really something to find out. Yeah. yeah, and and then yeah, yeah. Um, your friend tried to hunt him down for you, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. Which guy was that? Um, and then he had passed away. Remember the guy that wrote the book? Oh, unfortunately. That, but that would have been really kind of a neat <laughs> meeting, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Oh, all these stories. Oh, it's very interesting, really, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> yeah we, were, we were very grateful. Um, if you saw the clip in the beginning with the jeeps coming out, you know, that was uh, uh, Dr. Mark Chun and Eric Ako and Jeff Wong and the reenactors, you know, they brought out all their vehicles and they were so kind oh. and generous. And we went out to, you know, Kahuku to shoot that. And um, yeah, it was a three day shoot and very tremendous <laughs> production. Yeah. It was very hot. And um, uh, it was like, August and mm -hmm. I was I was so sunburned my lip was swollen oh. <laughs> like I got <laughs> punched <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. but those are real Marines out there too uh -huh. and so mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, mm -hmm. Lieutenant yep. Colonel Adam Bryson he brought out his his guys and Nate Miller and so <laughs> yeah it's yeah. pretty cool real Marines out there and mm. yeah. Do you, do you well, I'm glad we you found interest. Uh, <laughs> do you think I'm, we captured it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm thankful that you uh, appreciated some of my uh, experiences and, and tried to make something out of it. <laughs> well, of <laughs> course. That's, 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 what you did was amazing. <laughs> Personally, I didn't think I had done much, but in your eyes, it was quite 
quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it was amazing, Herb. <laughs> Not just our eyes, the uh, Congress, too. Mark, oh, Mark yeah. Dakai. So, so Ooh, well, we're trying to get the clip. Mark, but yeah. so, Mark Takai, um, and actually, we, we're very grateful for Mark Takai's help as yes. well. He, he was a friend for you know, so long, and then one day he had called, oh, and there's, there's a certificate from Mark um, on the release of both films. And, and, and actually, we, he really helped us get to Okinawa to shoot the documentary, you know, um, uh, because Hawaiian Air, they were very generous, and they stuck me and Alex and Johnny Tomura on a, you know, just really skeleton crew on a flight to Fukuoka. And then uh, when I told Mark what you did, and I said, you know, this guy didn't even get a medal. <laughs> he got this citation piece of paper. And, and then uh, what Mark did, we worked together to make this happen. And, uh, but this was so funny, you know, he was reading this and it was a certificate. And he was like, you know, um, I'm sorry, it was, was kind of last minute. So I didn't, I can't get you on the floor. And I said, that's okay. You know, the main thing is the certificate, but that's okay because you got a standing ovation anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was quite an honor. Yeah, that was that, really cool. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. So nice. We're so glad okay. to get Mark in that film, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. there's, that's in, also in the Capitol, in the gallery. Yeah. 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 Oh, we he miss was, Mark. It's really sad that he had to leave us so early in his life. Yes, Mark was a tremendous champion yes, of yes. the veterans, and uh, mm -hmm. and he was very happy too. You know, when mm -hmm. to be of help, and mm -hmm. he was always asking, "How can I help?" You know, mm -hmm. and and even the film that we're currently making about the origins of the 442, so oh. the hundred, the 442, and oh. the MIS. Oh. So um, you know, I you see. have another cameo in there. Oh. <laughs> On December seventh, you oh. were ironing, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so <laughs> that's in there. <laughs> you remember all yeah. those things. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, we're working on we're finalizing the script and you know we'll be shooting in December. <laughs> yeah, I was Mark ironing that morning <laughs> so when the announcement came. Right, yeah. and uh, Mark helped us get the funding for that as well as the uh, the rest of the legislature. We're so grateful, um, and hopefully we'll be back uh, sharing more about that film as well mm -hmm. and actually the whole process of mm -hmm. of filmmaking. Oh, we're in pre production right now, but. Um, there's stuff we can share. <laughs> yeah. And actually, oh, I have to tell people that, you know, you helped us make the movie too because, yeah. you know, uh, when uh, Alex, we were working on the script and um, there were lines and we, of course, needed a Japanese translation. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, then, and then there was a situation where, you know, they weren't coming out and, and I was like, yeah, but they came out right away. And so we're trying to think, okay, so what would hap have happened? Like, what is plausible? You know, like, what if you had gone to General Amamiya's cave first? Then you would have been, you know, like, mm. oh, I just want some people to come out. <laughs> right? Mm. And so Herb, Herb really wrote his own lines. <laughs> and then, and uh, I, get, I drove it over to Brad Matsumura, the actor who played you, and then he was very nervous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he was happy to meet you at, the, mm. at HIF yeah. at the end. Yeah. Well, that was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well. <laughs> All right. Well, well, it took you to make something out of my experiences. Well, well I think, I, I personally didn't think much of what I did, but. But to you, it was so different. So oh, that, that's uh, well, saving <laughs> lives is a big deal. <laughs> okay. All um, right. Okay. You know, these Thank guys, you. these World War II veterans, they're so humble. And, you know, you got to mm. love them. My gosh. <laughs> anyway, that's it okay. for me today. Stacey to the rescue, although it was really Herb to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us. and.